if that doesn't pump you up, I don't know what will. I will be at a loss. Man, we are finishing up 21 days of prayer and fasting today. Whew. And today I just get to have fun. The state of the church is different. If this is your first time with us in house or your first time online, this is not normally how Sundays look. This is not normally how sermons go. Today is something special that we call State of the Church. We do this one time of the year and we celebrate all the things that happened last year and we cast some vision on what's going to happen this year. We give you a little preview of some of the things that are about to go on. And uh, we're coming at the end of a 21-day fast and tonight is a community night of worship. I'm so excited about that. And I've been hearing God do incredible things in your lives through this 21 days of fasting and prayer. And, and just as Queen Esther called all the Jews in the nation of Persia into a fast when things were most dire, that's what we do. We call the church into a time of fasting and prayer at the beginning of the year because we're the only ones standing in the gap for Longview. And I say big C church, not just this church, but the church is the only thing standing in the gap for Longview. Amen. All of our churches need for God to move in them. Amen. Amen. So the state of the church is good because we have a good God. Amen. But I want to be really clear about the state of the church. And this is something we, that we adopted a few years back, and this is the way we start every state of the church. It starts like this. The state of the church will never be greater than the state of our heart for the city. And if you want to follow along in your notes and your worship guide today, there's going to be some fill in the blanks. It does not matter what we do. If we lose a heart for our city, the state of the church will go with our heart. It will wander, it will drift, it will lose alignment. So what we do is we focus on what are we doing in our city. We have a mission and we have a vision at Valley View Church. It's part of our culture to love on our city. It's part of our culture to do church the way that we do church. And we're not going to be like every other church. And that's okay. Amen. Amen. We're the part of God's, uh, of Christ's body that he has put here on 33rd Avenue for this time. We've got a purpose. So let's talk about our vision and our mission. Our vision and our mission are very simple. It's not original. We stole it straight from scripture, as a matter of fact. Our vision is this, to see people transformed by the gospel of Jesus through our mission to exalt God and encourage people. Amen. That's simple. It's super simple. Maybe too simple. But I want you to remember it. I want you to remember it so much that our mission is the thing that you see when you walk through the front door. After you get past the glass that says, welcome home, right there, it says, exalt God, encourage people. And it's a picture of your city. Never forget that. That's there on purpose. But where do we get this big, grand vision and mission from? Well, two places in Scripture I'm going to bring you today. Matthew 28 is where the vision comes from. And Jesus came and said to them, this is after the resurrection, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, you go. Look at somebody say, go. go. Not right now, <laughs> after church is over. But Go. Therefore, and make disciples of all nations. What was the therefore in reference to? That all authority has been given to him. Therefore, go. You have a mandate from Jesus to do something with his authority. I am not one, the one giving you the authority to, for the vision. I'm just pointing it out. That's what I do. I point things out. Sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're not. I just point them out. Therefore, 
Go! Do something with the authority that Christ has given you. Go and do what? Make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you to the end of the age. And he says something beautiful there. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Well, Jesus, you commanded a, a lot of different things, but one teacher of the law actually asked him, what's the greatest of all the commandments? Well, we're, that's where we get the mission from because when he's talking about teaching people the commandments, we've tried to make them as simple as possible for people to understand. So Matthew chapter 22, earlier in the book, in verse 38, uh, 38 or 37 through 39 says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Yes. Amen. Exalt God. Yes. Amen. We just stole it. Again, not original. <laughs> Exalt God. That's the greatest commandment. With all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Wait, wait, wait. Encourage people. See what we did? It's not hard. But it's hard to remember that, isn't it? That's our mission. If we can exalt God with excellence, we can encourage people at all places in their life. Not just some people, all nations. Encourage all nations. It doesn't matter what they look like, where they come from, what they're doing. Encourage them. And simultaneously exalt God. And you will have an impact on their life. Whether they accept or reject Jesus, it doesn't matter. You've had an impact on their life. We are not going to see the vision happen unless we get the mission right. So, what has been the driving force behind our vision and mission? Well, we, we came back to the table uh, August. I won't say well, we signed a renewal here, but we made some pretty major decisions last year that brought my family back to the table to know that we're, we're not just going to be here for the last five years. We're going to be here for the next five years and way on into the future. There were some big commitments we made personally last year to ensure that we stay here. Amen. Amen. And we reignited at our five-year anniversary in August. Yes. This vision and mission reminded you, not like we don't say this all the time, but we put it right back out in front of you just like this as much as we could. Because really, the plan hasn't changed. And it won't change. Consistently improve at a sustainable pace for growth. That's the plan. Everything changes, just not all at once. Because that's not sustainable. Also, if you've been with us on this journey for any amount of time here at Valley View Church, things do not look like when you first got here. And if you're new, brace yourself. Because if you stay with us on this journey any amount of time in the future, things will not look like in a year or in five years what they look like today. Because that's the plan. If we see something that needs improvement, we improve it. If we see that something's missing, we provide it. If we see that something is not working... We kill it. Right, that's where everybody goes, ugh. <laughs> Pastor, talking about killing things. Yeah, we kill things. We will kill good things to make room for better things. That's just what we do. But it's consistent. There's always something changing. And this is what I love about you as a part of this church culture. You walk in and you're so used to change at this point. You walk in and you go, huh, that's radically different. Yeah. <laughs> you're just used to it. It's beautiful. There must be a reason for that, to reach people for the gospel of Jesus. Yes! You've got it. 
So let's talk about some of the things that happened last year in this arena. We did a lot of different um, changes last year that I've got to be honest with you, I was exhausted looking through the photos <laughs> of what happened last year going, oh, wow, we did that. That was last year? Wow, 2022 was busy. So we, last year, did a lot of infrastructure on media, new cameras, new lights. So the picture on your left is the best thing that we could come up with this time last year. The picture on the right is just an average picture from one of our broadcasts last week. Lighting and pictures just radically changed. Why? Because we've been blessed to be able to get some really nice equipment to make that really great. Yeah. So all of you that are online right now, you can clap. <laughs> we hear you. But that is something that is valuable because you have to understand the lobby is no longer the lobby of the church. That camera and that camera and that camera and that camera are the new lobby of our church. That's where people are checking us out before they walk through these doors. It's safer. We get it. We want to make that lobby as good as we can. And also... We painted the entire interior of the church. That is not an exaggeration. The sanctuary, the fellowship hall, and the entire hallway connecting the two with the lobby. All of it. Like a week. You walked out on one Sunday, you walked in the next, and it was a different color. Whew. But it's crazy how one thing at a time, one thing at a time, one thing at a time, it builds into some place that, that we, can, we can host things for you and your family members and people that aren't used to coming to church. You can walk them through that door and they can feel comfortable and not even know why because yeah. we've put a lot of intentionality into that. And then last year, we, we renovated our entrance, gave it a little makeover, and introduced a free coffee bar. I, I see. Because if you want to encourage people, I've learned that caffeine encourages people. It just does. I'm encouraged by caffeine. I just feel like the world can be encouraged if we just offer them caffeine. And <laughs> what's fun about this is we want to put as much caffeine in you before you start uh, praising Jesus as we can so that you praise Jesus with as much energy as you can before you crash. <laughs> you can take a good nap at home after church. That's fine. <laughs> but here we want to worship Jesus together. And then this, this was almost a forgotten one. We moved the nursery from right outside the, the sanctuary to down the hall. So all the kids' environment is down the hall and gave it radical new updates as well. Man. I, I know, last year was a busy year for renovations. A lot was constantly happening. But let me tell you, none of these things happen. None of these things happen without some key ingredients. All change comes from the faithful generosity of your time, your talent, and your treasure. Amen. And it really takes a bold combination of all three of those things. Because with your time, someone has to show up and actually put the paint on the wall. And hopefully there's talented people that are putting, and I will give our crew some credit. They've got talent in painting. We know, because we've been painting together for years now, some of us. We know how to paint a church and repaint a church. We've learned. But you use your time 
in conjunction with your talent, the thing that God has gifted you with. And when you bring those two things together, it begins to get the change ball rolling. But also, you can have all the time and all the talent in the world, but you, if you don't have some money in the bank, you can't pay for the paint or the supplies or any of the things that are the sound panels that are going on the walls and the cameras and the, 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 the lumber for the, the staging. You have to have all three to make it work. And that is the beauty of, of the change around here. It's because I think you get the idea. I think you get the vision. I think you get the plan and the focus of it that our plan has never been to strike one big body blow and, and take out all the problems in Longview at one time. It's not our strategy. Our strategy is to win by a thousand paper cuts. Just keep, keep after it. Don't stop. Just keep working it. Don't give up. Once you get one thing done, you ask, what's next? That's one of my favorite questions. Well, pastor, we just did this. What's next? Oh, how much time do you have? Some of you have made that mistake and asked that question. You know. Because once we get over one thing, there's something else that God has for us. We're a growing thing. We, we're, not, we're not dead. We're growing. So... All of it comes down to, I'm a numbers guy. So when I look at the church, sometimes I look at church by the numbers. And I want to share with you what the church looks like. This is church by the numbers. This is how many first-time guests we had that filled out a Connect card, and we sent them a handwritten note with a Dutch Brothers gift card last year, 34. Now, that's cool. But let me be honest with you. That's actually lower than the last couple of years. So here's my prayer, and I hope this is yours too. I pray we double that number this year. Amen. Now you're with me. Because every time somebody is willing to say, you know what, I do want to know more about this church, and puts that Connect card in a kiosk or gives a digital Connect card online, we want to gift you with that and just say thank you. Now, here's a cool number. I love this one. We did 22 water baptisms last year. Man. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we had a youth event, and, and we normally do a, a baptism on Easter Sunday. And if you're interested in being baptized, you'll be able to sign up pretty soon for baptisms on Easter Sunday. We always do baptisms on Easter Sunday. We always do baptisms in September as well. But we had a youth event, some things happen in the church that we had to tack on another baptism, uh, it, Thanksgiving Sunday. That was something to have some thanksgiving for. We did that and then ate. It was a busy day. We baptized 22 people. That's 22 people going public in their faith in Jesus just last year. Right here, right there where the baptistry is. Man. Last year, we had 13 people that said, you know what? I love the vision and the mission of Valley View Church, and I want to be a member. And have jumped in. And let me tell you, if you're interested in what's going on around here, come see me next Sunday right after church. We'll have some snacks for you. And we will get you into Connect class. And you can ask as many questions as you want to. And we're going to give you three weeks worth of information that tells you all about Valley View Church and what we believe and what we think. So jump on board with us on that. If you're interested in finding a place to serve in the church, jump right on into Connect class. We're going to give you a, a, a spiritual gift test, and we're going to help you see exactly where God is aligning your gifts personally so that you can be fulfilled in what God's called you to do. And this is a fun one. We started giving out free Bibles. 
Now, we know that if you have a smartphone, you, you can have a free Bible on your phone, but we, we wanted to add to that and put Bibles that we have prayed over in people's hands. So last year, we gave away 27 free Bibles. People, and that is literally just people walking up to us saying, hey, uh, I need a Bible. And we're like, yes! So exciting. And this is a coincidence completely, but we also had 27 first-time givers last year. That's 27 people that, that more than membership said, you know what, I believe in what's going on. I'm going to I'm going to fill out online, or I'm going to do a recurring gift, or, or I'm going to give in service. I, I'm going to contribute to the, the treasure of this ministry. And that's where this comes down to, because one of the things that makes this role is your faithful giving. Amen. And with your faithful giving, we're able to sustainably grow our budget every year. Year after year. Isn't that remarkable? 2018 was our first full fiscal year here at Valley View Church. Every single year, people have been more generous. Isn't that amazing? What does that mean? What does that translate into? Well, it translates into more staff. We got a hiring position open right now. Some of y'all don't even know about. <laughs> it translates into more staff, more resources for us to impact our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're, we're not at the point where we're stressed over our bills. We're at the point where we're going, where can we pour this into to have maximum effect for the gospel? Speaking of which, not just locally, you guys give globally. And you guys are top tier. It's fantastic. There's, there is uh, projects in Pakistan, and uh, our, our administrative bishop uh, from Pakistan is already scheduled for, for April again. Jonathan Rahmet, we love you, bro. He's already scheduled. He, that, he is one of my first calls in January. Every single year, Pastor Cole, when can I come? Like, we love you, man. He also comes and he cooks really spicy Pakistani food for us when he stays with us. So he, he won us quick. We love him. But he's doing valuable work there evangelizing to a people group that you do it the wrong way in the wrong town, you could be stoned. We love him and what his team does in Pakistan. They're amazing. We also have, there's a children's home, El Shaddai Children's Home that we support every single month. And then, of course, there's some local things, Caring and Pregnancy Center that we raise money for. We've got some new partnerships with Royal Family Kids. Well, Jess just came and gave you guys a presentation a couple of weeks ago. We've got, we've got some partnerships with Kessler Elementary where we've adopted them and, and remodeled some classrooms that were in desperate need. Step in the gap wherever we can. And then there's buy a tree, change a life. And buy a tree, change a life is one of the most fun things we do. We get out there and we sling Christmas trees for two weeks. And people come and they pay for Christmas trees and then they give donations over the cost of their Christmas tree. And every year, over half of the Christmas trees we sell get a donation on top of the Christmas tree. Every year. So in 2022, some of y'all are just waiting going, what's the number, Pastor? We know you wait till State of the Church to tell us how much we raise for, state, for buy a tree, change life. Well, you know this by now. If you've been around any amount of time, you're like, what's the number? Just get to it. Well, we had our best year last year ever for buy a tree, change life, and we raised just here locally uh, $10,288.91. <laughs> Ha! 
half of that has already gone into world missions. The other half of that is we're figuring out what projects we're bringing on this year for kids locally. We already give out backpacks. We already give out coats. We remodel Kessler. Let, we're going to find some new things to do with this money. Amen? Amen? That's the beauty of it. Yeah. And then there's this thing that sometimes flies under the radar, but you're very faithful with. Last year was a little bit lower year, so I want to highlight it, and I want to kind of let you know and remind you exactly what it is. Um, it's called REACH. So if you pull out your giving envelope in your worship guide, there's this little category on here under tithe offering. It's called REACH. I want to show you what REACH does. REACH allows us to put on free community events every year that we don't charge people for. We just open up our property and say, come on in. Have it all for free. Give it away. So what are those events? Well, Easter, the Easter egg hunt, we recycle our eggs. I don't know if you guys know this, if you haven't been out there in the Easter egg hunt. The kids go and they pick up a bunch of empty eggs and they come and they pour the empty eggs out in a basket. So it doesn't matter how many eggs they picked up. And then we just get handfuls of candy that you have provided and paid for and we put it into their baskets. And let their parents figure it out afterwards. And we just keep buying more eggs every year, even though we're recycling them. We lost count somewhere around seven, 8,000 eggs. I don't know, but I know there's lots of eggs that end up on that property when we do our Easter egg hunt. And we may have to change some things this year because I've got to be honest with you, our parking situation on Easter is rough. You guys are the most incredible volunteers. You pack out every available spot. I feel like within 500 yards of this facility. And then everything down 33rd and around Williams is just people walking <laughs> to get to the Easter egg hunt. So we're going to have to maybe change some things. Big surprise. To give more room for more people to be able to attend this year. What a cool problem to have. And then we do something in-house called Summer FX. The FX stands for Family Experience. It's a kid's event that they get to drag their parents to. Because it's a kid's worship night. It is 100% focused on them. The whole sanctuary gets remodeled. The lobby gets remodeled unrecognizably into whatever theme it was. Last year, it was a space theme. With a giant planet hanging from the middle of the... With stars shining everywhere. And... and the kids that are coming in are hearing the gospel, and when they come down, their parents and their grandparents, their aunts and uncles, whoever brought them, can come down and pray with them. Yeah. All for free. And then they get to go outside, eat pizza, and jump on inflatables. It's all free because of your generosity. And then we ask you to jump in with us on something around the end of October <laughs> called Trunk or Treat. And you guys decorate your trunks, you get out there and you hand out candy, and we just have a ton of people come through in a, in a really safe alternative to Halloween. That we can account for the candy and we account for the wholesomeness of it. And it's a beautiful thing, and we always do it. I've been asked, you know, why don't we change the night or the time and to accommodate? No. That night on October 31st is when people are out. We're not a safe alternative unless we're an alternative. And let's catch the people that are out and they see us and they're looking for candy that night anyway. Here we are. And then let's load them up with candy just like we do on Easter. And then last year was a really interesting year in our student ministry because we decided, hey, we should do a summer camp. <laughs> we should do our own summer camp at the dunes. 
It was awesome. And we were thinking, oh man, it'd be really great. Here's our goal. We would love to have 14 or 15 go to this summer camp at the dunes. And when sign up hit 28, we're, we're like, we have to recruit more leaders. It was amazing. So cool. And we're already, we're already, look, our deposits are already paid for this year for it. Again, we're going to repeat. But it was the recruitment of new leaders. And, and this last year has really been the birth of something, I think, that is probably the biggest win that we've had in the last five years. Is that more clearly defined is the service model and the leadership model of our church. And if I had to pick a biggest win from 2022, it would be this, that across almost every ministry last year, we've elevated and people have stepped up and said, I want to be a coordinator. I want to lead a ministry. I want to lead a small group. And this is kind of what it looks like. We have a board of elders that is an advisory board. We have some staff and directors, like Pastor Quinn is our, our volunteer and our communications pastor. My wife is our family life director. But can I tell you, three people can't do all this for very long and stay healthy. So we prayed really hard last year. God, we need people to step up that, that we don't see coming. Like, God, you put it on their hearts. Like We'll recruit, of course. We love doing that. But God, you're going to have to put it on their hearts. And then you just see people stepping up going, hey, I'll, how can I help? And we launched our first coordinator class, and, and then all of a sudden, all these coordinators. So what are coordinators? Coordinators, very simply, are ministry leaders and small group leaders. They're literally coordinating the ministry of this church. They're pouring into the people, our volunteers, our small groups. They're the lifeblood of this church. They're that first level of leadership. That's the front lines as far as I'm concerned. And I'm thinking about our coordinators that are in the room today. It, we're not done yet, but church, could you just bow your heads for just a minute? I, and let's pray for our leaders, our coordinators. Father God, in this public setting right now, I want to acknowledge and encourage our coordinators, our directors, our leaders. As we encourage them, God, I pray a fresh and new anointing over them. Because as they are on the front line of this ministry, they're going to see the attack. They're going to see the problems. They're going to see the things that are going on. And God, I just pray an extra layer, God, of protection for them and their families. And God, I pray that you would just continue to strengthen them and grow them in their roles. And God, I pray that you lift up those around them to support them. And God, bring up new leaders around them this year. Because the need is great. Because our, our city needs you. So we pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. So with all these departments being filled out, it, it means something that comes to our core. That means there's more opportunities to serve now than ever before. There are more opportunities in our church. If you, if you look around when you walk in on Sundays and go, oh, no, everybody's got this. That's our volunteers laughing. Asking for more help in their, in their timid laughter. Because when Jesus told his disciples, he didn't say pray for the harvest. The harvest is obvious. The harvest is all the people in Longview, Kelso, 
across the bridge that don't know Jesus. Our harvest is obvious. There's 90,000 people within 10 miles of this church. We know our harvest. We don't have to pray for the harvest. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, therefore, pray for the workers of the harvest. We're praying for you. Because we believe, to our core, saved people serve people. I just think God saved you and and has a purpose for you. And you're right now going, "Uh, I don't know if he has a purpose for me. No, he does. I promise you. You just may not know it yet. So let me give you a few things that, that might help. Let me give you some areas where, pull out your connect card, wave it at me, right out of your worship guide, yeah, old school church right now, they're not hankies, they're they're cards, some of y'all have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay, it's fine. But let me give you a few places where, where, where we could use some genuine help this year. Hospitality. So on the back of that Connect card, this is the sign me up to serve. What do, what do I mean by hospitality? Everything from people in the parking lot to office volunteers during the week doing follow-up. Hospitality. We're building out new hospitality teams as we speak because we want to be accountable with all the people that God is sending our direction. And we want to do more. Another one, there's a little media block right there. If you like taking pictures, I've got a camera for you. The church has the equipment. We just need the person with the eyes to take the pictures. And why? Because we do a really great job. We, we even hire out photographers in big events because there's so much going on. But every Sunday are opportunities for us to capture in photography the beauty of what's happening in this place. The worship, the smiling faces pouring coffee... People hanging out in the lobby, talking. Why do we want to take pictures of that? Well, Because we want to show the world that this is a great place to be. And someone that's never walked into a church has all these preconceptions about what they think is going to happen when they walk through the door. Let's shatter every one of them with the best pictures ever that say, no, this is the place you want to be. And then, there's this one in the top, or in the middle, on the right, facility. Facility. We have some construction projects going on this year. This is not one of those weekly tasks. But if you're interested, and you're pretty good with a hammer and a saw, and a level, let me be clear about that. And a level. (laughs) Things have to be level, okay? (laughs) If you have some skills, sign up today. Fill this out. Put this in the kiosk today. We'll call you. We'll put you on this team this week and ask you for clarification on exactly what you mean by that. But we're pretty direct today. If you fill out facility, I'm assuming you want to be part of the construction team so that when we have the construction projects that will happen this year, we'll schedule you and put many hands to the task. So what are we doing this year? Good question. First and foremost, there's a brand new team being formed. You guys good? Can I, can I pull a few more minutes from you? We're building out a brand new prayer team right now that, that will be a service to the community. 
Because I've asked myself, what do churches offer communities? And the one thing, and, and it's not philanthropic. Look, we, we could be a charity all day long, but miss the gospel. Am I clear on that? Our job here is not to be a charity. Our job is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go make disciples. His vision was clear for us. So what can the church offer the world that nobody else can offer? We can pray for your friends and family. And we can build it in such a way that if you're a member of this church, you can get on and you can pray for all the needs on the public wall. And then we're going to have a separate prayer team that is going to pray for the private needs. And anyone in the world can get on our social media, our website, and ask for prayer. That's the goal. Because I think what your friends and your neighbors and your family need more than anything right now is prayer. And I want this to be called a house of prayer. No, that's not right. Hold on. He wants this place to be a house of prayer. So we're building a whole team about that. Don't worry. There's going to be a whole sermon series about that later this year. <laughs> you guys know exactly how this is going to roll. But I want to offer that in such an audacious way to our community. I want to, I want to, I want to equip you with cards like we do invite cards, and and I want them to be prayer cards, and I want you to just litter the city with them. I'm just kind of, all right, I'm going to stop stop expanding my time now. We're going to make some new improvements to this facility, and one of the ways that we're going to make these, and these are going to be massive improvements. What do I mean by massive improvements? Well, We've been raising money since 2020. We started a roof fund in 2020. What a year. We do have $14,000 in that account for a roof. For the very first time in the last five years, um, we're looking at uh, borrowing money as the church. Now, I want you to, full disclosure, when I got here, there were four loans on the books, In our first year, we got rid of three of them. The other one, we are knocked down fast. But we're not going to be borrowing from a bank. We're going to be borrowing from our denomination. Because we have this wonderful program called Propel. And what we borrow when we pay back an interest, we'll fund new church plants in the Pacific Northwest. I would much rather my interest go to that than know if... I'm not going to name a bank. (sighs) I was right there. I was right there. Like, there's only one in town, so... (sighs) I want to see new life, not just here. I want to see this kind of life everywhere, in every church in our city, in every church in the Pacific Northwest. I don't care if they're gospel-based, Bible-believing churches. God, let them see your spirit move and grow. Because none of this matters. Here's the improvements. We're going to put that roof on. We're going to remodel the lobby, expand it. We're knock sound down some walls. See why I need construction workers? We're knock down some walls and build a full cafe, refloor all that. We're going to refloor the stage and redo it. 
Amen. Amen. Now, all we need is money. <laughs> but I think you guys are faithful. And I think that we're going to tackle this. And we're going to continue to improve this place at a sustainable pace for growth. And none of that matters if we miss the mark. We make this the coolest place in town. But none of it matters. Nothing matters if we do not share the gospel. So I want you to know. Everything we do this year, everything we did last year, everything that we're going to do this coming year is all about one thing. Finding innovative ways to share Jesus with people that have never considered him before. Making it irresistible. I want the gospel to be irresistible to people. Would you bow your heads today? Thank you so much for letting me wax on a little bit and dream and cast vision. I'll be honest, some of that was in my notes and some of it wasn't. But all of it's on my heart. So this is one of those days where you're usually getting a little bit more out of me. Here in a moment, we're going to give you the opportunity to give and we're going to finish this service with a song. But right now, I just want you to just center yourself with the gospel today. Ask yourself, how... If, if this church community and family can make the gospel the center of their life, how do I in my life make the gospel the center of my life? Are there people I haven't shared Jesus with that need Jesus? Are there people that I have friendships with, influence with, family members that I have the opportunity to share Jesus with and I just haven't been gospel-centered? Because nothing matters if we don't share the gospel. But we've built on a good foundation, church great leaders I want you to hear my heart this morning I love you guys my family loves you guys to the chagrin of my family and in-laws Washington State is home we love this place Father God, I just pray right now that you reinforce what we do here as a gospel-centered church. God, I pray for the families that are in this church and that have influence in our community with their friends, their neighbors, their family, in their workplace. That God, we can keep pushing We can keep pushing back the gates of hell in Longview, Washington. We can keep seeing more people saved, transformed by your gospel. God, I think think I'm surrounded by a group of people that want to roll up their sleeves as bad as I do and get the work done. So God, I pray for them right now. Give them strength. God, renew in us a spirit. Stir up the gifts that you have put in people's lives. That we would move with compassion for the lost. 
and we would move with passion for our city. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you just lift your hands as I bless you today? Father God, I pray blessings on your people today. God, I pray that you bless. They're rising up, they're lying down, they're coming in, they're going out. God, I pray that you bless them with favor as the light of your face shines upon them. God, I pray that you bless them with health and strength for their journey ahead. God, I pray that you, you bless them financially as they continue to be generous to others. God, I pray that you bless them with the greatest of all blessings, the honor, the privilege, the opportunity to introduce Jesus Christ to someone as Lord and Savior of their life. This week I pray in Jesus' name, amen.